Okay. Now we are good to go. So I gave little, I added little functionalities, the glossary and the nomenclature with the finance flavor and made it the right one. We discussed yesterday, uh, we closed the session yesterday with objectives of corporate finance. What are they? Wealth maximization, profit maximization, wealth maximization, sir. Yeah, correct. The profit maximization and wealth maximization. I gave the example of an independent person like you and me, he, he or she doing a job with a salary growth year on year with increments. And looking at a bigger picture with exponential growth rate of salaries. And that's the kind of analogy uh, for objectives of wealth maximization, profit maximization, or wealth maximization, okay? When you look at profit maximization, it is the objective of the CFO in consultation with the CEO through board of directors, okay, to promote Escalate earnings per share every year. So what is earnings per share? Earnings after tax divided by outstanding equity shares, number of outstanding equity shares, common shares, not preferential shares. Now how do you calculate earnings after tax? What difference? Formula for earnings after tax how do you get it it is earnings, earnings before, before interest tax minus tax sir. correct earnings before tax minus minus tax, tax. Sir. you deduct tax from ebt that becomes eat and how do you get ebt deduct interest from ebit that's how you get it Fine. The earnings after tax divided by outstanding common equity shares will give you profit after tax. I'm sorry, uh, earnings per share. Now, this, these are the earnings belongs to whom? Earnings after tax belongs to whom? To the company or to someone else? The companies are shareholders. Shareholders, shareholders company, is company is different from shareholders, okay? So, uh, owners or the shareholders, they can claim it is their money, their profit, which we call it as earnings after tax. When it is broke down to per unit, we call it as EPS, earnings per share. Now, why profits are aimed to increase year on year is, when shareholders want money every year, when someone comes to me, you suggest me how to move with stock markets, I want to do investments. When I ask them, are you looking at financial assets for wealth or are you looking at income or earnings? Then they say, obviously earnings. Maybe they're not understood what is earnings here. The earnings for shareholders is dividend. Quarterly dividend, a half yearly dividend, or annual dividend. Most of the companies pay annual dividend only, but it's uh, uh, seen with public sector companies paying interim dividends. There are some companies to attract new investments from the public, they keep on paying half yearly dividends also. There, there's nothing wrong in that. That depends on company's policy. So share, shareholders here want, they never believe the future. They want their money back as of now. They may not trust the company. They may not have the trust on the industry. They don't trust the economy. They don't trust the government's policy, whatever. So a bird in hand is better than two birds in the bush. That's what they believe. So company made dividends this year and they have taken their dividend back in cash. Cash dividend they have taken and they will retain the shares of the same company without selling them because CFO, a CEO of the company will say, next year we'll give more dividend. So dividend is the pinching factor for this uh, a company because of the shareholders. So maximizing the EPS, maximizing the 
dividend is the objective of this company because profit maximization is the objective number one wealth maximization is maximizing the firm value in turn maximizes the stock value maximizing the firm value means operating profit keeps on increasing every year that is ebit earnings before interest and tax that increases similarly eat also increases eps also increases maximizing the stock value why this increases here the firms the shareholders motive is not to take the dividend they ask the company to retain the earnings which earnings earnings after tax with the company itself and they ask them to invest in profitable projects which will give better returns better returns in the sense returns more than what company is giving right now earlier company used to give 15% say now a project is in hand which should give you 17% or 18% that's how wealth of the company maximizes firm value maximizes stock value maximizes is it clear friends yes sir yes sir then as a process as when someone when i asked what are the major uh, elements the first student uh, to give the answer was financial planning okay so you you do have financial planning and you make decisions in funding investing making dividends and maintaining liquidity position as working capital and finance control these are the three ways of looking at process further the process can be broke down into these areas you have a strategic objective to beat the market be the market leader okay scale up the operations every year reach new markets oh, uh, open a strategic unit or subsidiary in every country every year so that the strategic objectives at the top management level then accordingly financial objectives will be there okay it could be wealth maximization mostly and accordingly financial planning financial decisions financial control will be done maximizing the profits or wealth of the shareholders owners and let us talk about financial planning it is all about identifying the finance needs it's like uh, you know someone said yeah budget budget is all about uh, uh, annual planning right expenses and uh, income if you have the expenses then you need money that's how i say identify the financial needs to buy to spend to invest whatever then assess the cost associated with that uh need then assess the sources for capital or funding or mobi mobilizing funds and estimating the cost of finance in raising that then cost of capital what is the rate of interest if it is debt what is the cost of equity or required rate of return from the equity shareholders then evaluate financial risk we will talk about uh, uh, operating risk or business risk and financial risk in the coming session the decision making is broadly divided into funding decisions investment decisions liquidity decisions and dividend decisions okay so funding decision is all about acquisition of funds okay raising the funds from the public or borrowing from banks uh, getting it from private equity firms getting it from institutions maybe sometimes you, you need to sell your existing equity also it all depends on what are the sources of your funds then utilization of funds the pathetic story of any company will be you mobilize the funds and keeping them in escrow account they are not you are not using them it is it's a it is a death it's a disaster no company does that but many companies importantly public sector units in india it may happen improper utilization of funds make the companies sick though they have very potential projects in hand and sources of finance are there good sources and finance money capital is readily available to use but they are not utilized 
on time timing is so bad not only that what should be the combination of capital if at all you have it's not necessary you should always have debt and equity we'll discuss in financial leverage session then leasing are you trying to buy it out or you try to lease it these are the capital uh, raising or funding decisions then investment function or investment decisions if at all you are investing what is the financial feasibility of this project first that is a prima facie is it feasible financially see the project feasibly based on the government meeting the government rules environmental regulations uh local uh, resistance that is not part of finance please uh, don't misunderstand we are talking only about financial area okay so financial feasibility financial feasibility means the size of investment can we raise this much amount to invest in this project if at all we invest when do we get money okay so is it financially feasible so that is what tested through capital budgeting tools npv IRR profitability index. We'll be discussing all those things in unit three or cluster four. Then uh, capital rationing. Capital rationing happens if we have more than one project or one investment opportunity, and you have limited capital. In that case, you will be ranking the projects and allot the capital according to the top ranked project first, then later on number two ranked project. so that happens if you have limited capital and project more than one that's how it goes then choice of assets again it happens that when you are investing are you are you okay with this kind of project is an asset please do understand that so when you have like i was talking about capital rationing when you have more than one project there is a choice if you feel fixed assets are more risky inviting business risk so avoid them you put the money in a services oriented project so that's what we are talking about choice of asset we will talk about uh, uh, business risk and operating leverage in the coming session then liquidity decisions or dividend decisions when you have, uh, when the company maintains just now we talked about the profit after tax converted into eps eps either could be distributed as dividends if profit maximization is the objective or else it could be remained wholly or partially if the earnings are retained so whether it is 50 50 100% dividend 50% dividend 25% dividend or no dividend it all depends on your decision okay then this may not be so important for all liquidity working capital you know Uh, but it is always there uh, you should work you should put your uh, uh, mind and work with your team to work on working capital management which is further divided into inventory management cash management receivables management payables management and so on we will be discussing this in uh, unit 4 okay then so controlling planning is done implementation through various functions four important functions are done then controlling yeah it's always important what was your plan and how are your functions implementing how it is functioning it happens through budgetary control performance measurement quarterly monthly you cannot wait for yearly it never happens the so performance measurement so uh, uh, monthly or even yeah Sir, I have a doubt regarding wealth maximization, sir. Please, please. Sir, profit maximization means increasing the uh, sales and decreasing the cost of uh, uh, goods sold, sir. What What okay. is wealth maximization? How How will uh, How will we maximize the wealth? Yeah, I think. Uh, may I know who is this, Vasubrata? Yes, sir. yeah very good i think no one asked me this question sales maximization is not the headache of finance manager thank you thank you for asking that question 
सेल्स मैक्सिमाइजेशन और चेंजिंग द सीईओस appointing a new um, a marketing manager kind of things it's not part of financial manager keeping the sales as it is given giving to the company or, or cfo company cfo how profits are maximized how wealth is maximized that is the idea so within the finance ambit the finance manager tries to work on debt equity as capital cost of debt cost of equity the interest rate and dividends to be paid to be paid every year or periodically if at all the the whole earnings have to be given it should be given to the shareholders or it should be retained with the company this is the ambit of the cfo okay so i think i come i will repeat again when shareholders clearly say that we want dividends no one can say no for that please understand that shareholders are the owners of the company the majority of the shareholders vote for dividends cfo is helpless cfo is prepared for both to pay dividend and to retain the earnings okay so when shareholders say we want dividends every year then CFO through CEO of course he or she should work on maximizing the profits every year okay and of course as this is their CFO can always consult uh, our, our CEO and further with a uh, marketing manager or operations manager IT manager and so on that's a different thing and make them efficient but here our point is profit maximization is the only criteria so cutting cost expenses cannot be cut by the cfo but he can work on cutting the financial cost like interest payment taxes to be paid okay he or she as cfo has to work on that wealth maximization it is the it uh, uh, the project is given maybe the, it is a proposal from the ceo but it is a cfo who will appraise the project he will appraise the project and say that yeah this project is profitable just now i was telling you investment decisions financial feasibility cfo will tell first of all is this financially feasible or not if that is a productive pro project okay then the profits after tax which belongs to shareholders becomes retained earnings it will be part of reserves and surplus this becomes a cash rich company invest in the profitable projects and next year the dividends or uh, eps of the company will increase literally i think if a company if a person wants if a person wants money he or she can sell part of his or her shares if at all liquidity is a problem because company has potential projects in hand and dividend uh, and shareholders are not allowing for that i think that is killing okay if there are no projects but still company is retaining the earnings that is also wrong okay so you should have good projects then only company's profits will be maximized profit maximization not for the sake of dividend distribution to maximize the value of the shareholders okay got it as per the yes sir okay thank you then uh, yeah we are talking about controlling right so performance periodically it is mandatory and uh, there should be no mismatch between the plan and the quarterly or annual uh, um, reports that the cfo re receives then if at all any deviations positive and negative both but negative are more important to be corrected okay then here there is something interesting i think you may not find it everywhere but follow me carefully agency problems are more when the board board, board of directors is not aggressive and not closely watching the managers if it is something everything is left
narayan murthy he yelled a lot he was very angry on kind of packages given to ceo of infosys you can go back and search as a small assignment or case study why because for no reason this fellow is increasing his salary uh, with, with showcasing something else as the reason so this way managers are taking control of the company which is very dangerous so agency problems because of this agency problem shareholders wealth will be depleted directly or indirectly the cost is up through the projects through the expenses salaries to the ceo ceo kind of things so wealth of the shareholders is eaten by agents that's the idea here there are many theories beyond that but my control my objective is to present you or in, introduce them to you now look at this picture and understand try to understand i have personally prepared this chart for you i wish you understand so i i prepared in such a way that it is easy for you to understand i wish it is easy did you understand anything can anyone of you try what is happening on the screen yes sir yeah owners versus ownership versus control ownership means the shareholders and shareholders are the owners and the okay. control control remains in the hands of management but not in the hands of shareholders or debenture holders uh come again sorry o- ownership uh, lies in the hands of shareholders but okay. control only remains with management but not with shareholders or debenture holders okay good if you can see management decides like i told you introduced uh, agency problem or agents or cfos or ceos who are management management is directly responsible for raising debt raising equity or procuring the assets directly there is no doubt about it and debt holders they influence management because they have given the debt they own the debt okay shareholders own the equity and they stress board of directors and further board of directors stress management okay debt holders directly influence management board of directors directly influence management but shareholders don't have direct influence on management sometimes uh, i'm not talking about mukesh ambani who is a managing director okay that's different okay i own the shares of uh, uh jindal southwest holding limited okay i'm just a shareholder i cannot influence the management i own the share, uh, share shares of reliance nippon i own the share shares of many companies but i don't uh, uh, have influence on management my point here is if you look at this agency problem arises when board of directors are calm who are answerable to shareholders manage managers or management will take the control of assets if not if there are companies where there is more debt debt suppliers like bank and bfcs they will take the control of the assets okay shareholders can also take the control how when uh, satyams when ramalinga raju proposed that it is a surplus cash rich company satyam and the board has decided to transfer i think some 500 crores i'm not sure how much is the amount exactly 500 crores of money to its sister concern maitas which is a construction company that's where one of the board of directors uh who is also an investor he uh, is from sba mutual fund raised the question on what basis are we transferring maitas itself is running in heavy losses okay so there are many instances where directors pose questions and stop the decisions so that management is in tight control 
so this is how any company's asset control looks like owners always does not have control on assets actually they should have the control but because of higher debt or strong management weak board they may lose the control am i clear friends is it yes, clear sir. yes sir all of you deepika yashita yes sir mani yes yes sir venkat baskar then i asked i already asked you to uh, get some uh, details of cfo non cfo so you already gave me that okay uh, when we are looking at the cfo this is how a cfo stands uh, in the organizational hierarchy so uh, shareholders board of directors ceo under them we have marketing or oh, what uh, you have marketing head finance head hr head production and operation head you may have many other heads also like logistics supply chain uh, it and so on that depends on type of company okay these are more popular so i i was just limited to this so in cfo i think the other day i was uh, telling you uh, there is a difference between accounting and financing finance and accounts these two are completely different so you can see the difference here controller is a done uh, job done by uh, accountant or auditor or whatever and treasurer is the person who is the pure finance guy who, who takes care of financing capital structure decision liquidity decisions investment decisions dividend decisions and yeah there are many companies where they have to manage risk importantly forex rate uh, uh, risk hmm? so risk management is also part of cfo the major factors influencing i think in the capital environment corporate environment we have seen internal factors and external factors if you remember now these are the five factors influencing uh, internal and external factors influencing financing decisions for a cfo so there are uh, you can go through them then you can ask me sir how this will influence i didn't get it you can ask me quickly sir. dr raju how can you say that professor indukuri how can you say this is the factor if not i will go on to the next slide sir i have a doubt sir please so uh, not regarding this but okay. we study in uh, subjects named operation management and strategic management uh, how those two relate uh, relates with uh, financial management is that related uh, is the, are those related to financial management or any other no maybe this is uh, this, this is the area where you got the clue right so operations management is a functional management strategic management is a concept it happens at the top level management at the ceo levels you know maybe sitting with board of directors managing director kind of people will think about it of course all the functional heads are also part of strategic management that's a concept operations and production management is here and as you ask me strategic management and finance yes i, I think in the earlier uh, uh, slide i showed you uh, where is it the hierarchy i showed you somewhere uh, budgets financing decisions oh, oh, yeah so this is what i was, I was talking about the finance manager has to follow the corporate strategies what is the strategy of a company accordingly what are the strategic objectives to scale up the operations to tap the new markets acquire all the new companies okay uh, i think uh, very recently uh, an academy if you take in india which would come for public issue also it has it has grew to such a size only because of acquiring many other small companies that was the strategy the strategic objective is to acquire the companies which are operating successfully in their own personal or independent verticals okay then accordingly this finance manager will draw the plans and functions to meet the strategies and strategic 
objectives. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So these are the factors. You can just check if you have a question. This, this is an uh, earlier also we discussed internal fa external factors. We discussed those factors for a company, for a CEO, for a top management. But here these are the factors which are influencing financing decisions. Okay. Just go through them quickly. If you have a question, ask me. Is everything clear? Internal factors, external factors. Okay. Then let's go go back to no go forward to scope of finance. I think we discussed this, but uh, just to show what all, what is that you can all have as a finance manager within investment function, within financing function, within liquidity function, within dividend function. Okay. There are further things available to you. Uh, we will be discussing about all these things in detail. Okay. Some concepts or functions for your understanding. Traditionally, we had been talking about corporate finance, investments, banking, insurance, derivatives, FSA or financial statement analysis, M&A, mergers and acquisitions, international finance, uh, uh, financial markets. Uh, financial services and so on. Then in addition to that, advanced level you have asset pricing, that is valuation of equity, valuation of debt, uh, valuation of a convertible, anything. Uh, financial planning, personal financial planning or personal finance, microfinance, microcredit, behavioral finance, wealth management, that is related to investment. Okay? Uh, it's not about uh, wealth maximization as the objective of uh, or CFO. Uh, fixed income securities are more popular as FIS. In earlier B schools, I offered this uh, course. Okay, asset-backed securities. It happens in American markets and uh, UK markets. Bitcoin, blockchain, corporate valuation, FRM, financial risk management, cryptocurrency. All are aware. So just to present this, there are there are more things to give you. So these are the very basic level. Themes or concepts or realities to present you. Okay. So before I say I stop, any questions on this? Sir? Yeah. So what are mergers and acquisitions? Yeah, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, so I just now I told you an academy acquired small companies which are engaged in uh, online teaching and learning platforms. They buy the companies. They swap the equity of the companies. They do something and they take over the company. So one company buying another company, one company acquiring another company. Okay, you you call it as merger or acquisition. Based on the nature of the merger, based on the terms between these two, based on the uh, change in the ownership, old ownership retained or it got diluted. We call it. With there are different words, takeover, mergers, acquisitions. You can say it is a business combination. Business uh, Walmart acquired Flipkart, Indian major. I thought India Flipkart will uh, make India proud further growing and going beyond Indian uh, um, Indian uh, territories and tapping foreign markets. But unfortunately, it has leaned down to wall market. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, Walmart and uh, uh, it got acquired. So Walmart acquired Flipkart. Flipkart was uh, even before it got acquired by Walmart. Uh, Flipkart uh, acquired Mintra. Flipkart acquired PhonePay. You know, uh, all PhonePay was a big thing, and it was acquired by uh, Flipkart earlier, not now. Got it? And you have a specialized paper. In the fourth semester, right now, your seniors are having that corporate valuation mergers. Those into finance, you can take this subject also in future. Yeah. Any other question, please? So this can be either called as um, subsidiary company and holding company, right? 
no no that is the nature of the company this is completely different subsidiary company and holding company like you gave the example of cf of uh, cf of uh, uh, pepsi india pepsi india is a subsidiary of uh, pepsi usa right parent company yes this company is in india here that is there in us that's a parent company infosys is there in india if it has its own subsidiary in usa uh, I, they again these two are different companies but no one is acquiring the other company maybe if at all uh, it it may also happen if infosys usa acquires infosys in india maybe that is an acquisition okay so the way they are operating is different joint ventures collaborations okay uh, like you told parent company subsidiary that is different that is the form of organization of form of alliances while doing the business merger and acquisition is all about change in the ownership okay you got it yes sir there is something called reverse merger one company uh, takes the form of uh, uh, more companies like uh, reliance industries uh, got spin off into reliance capital reliance natural resources and so on it may happen that way also clear yes sir yeah thank you so please find out uh, uh, i always suggest you find out uh, uh, these things as uh, homework or post session activities you already did the second one and continue with the other one thanks for your participation we'll stop it uh, for the day